So almost three weeks ago, we started with the third Twinscape experiment, low budget versus high budget. The point of this experiment is just to have some fun, but also to see how big the difference in plant growth will really be. So our high budget tank has all the bells and whistles, a very powerful LED light, an external filter, a pressurized CO2 system, and aquasol as a substrate. Total cost, 484 euros or 547 dollars. The low budget tank has a very cheap LED light, an internal filter, a DOI CO2 system with yeast and sugar, and for the substrate we're using pond sole capped with gravel. Total cost 107 euros or 121 dollars. Both lights are on for 8 hours, but the high budget light is dimmed to 70%. Now let's see how both tanks are doing after 3 weeks. So yeah, I'm a little bit embarrassed to show this to you guys, but this is the current situation of the tanks. So starting with the low budget tank, basically covered in green dust algae. And there's a little bit of what looks like either staghorn or blackbush algae in the carpet. So that's not really good. And same situation on this side with the high budget tank, but just a little bit more intense because we have more and we have stronger light. And I just turned on the light and I noticed that the CO2 is not working. So that's not a good thing. It was still working yesterday. So we have to figure out what was wrong there. So basically what happened was I missed a few water changes. So last week I was away from home. I was traveling to Germany to visit the Den Plants greenhouse. I stayed there for three or four days. And uh, the days before that and the days after that, I was also very busy. So I didn't have time to do my regular water changes. And yeah, both substrates are still very new. They are still releasing some nutrients. So it's important that we do those water changes. And basically we already had some very small startup algae before that. So then missing those water changes, like the nutrient levels just kept increasing which is food for the algae, so we just got a little bit of an algae explosion, which is no big deal. I mean, it looks pretty bad right now, but we're just going to give it a, a good cleaning session and then things will be back to normal in no time. But first of all, let's see if we can figure out why this CO2 in the high budget tank is now working. So let's remove our CO2 cylinder. So we have pressure. It's also it's plugged into a smart socket. Smart socket is on, so we should have CO2. Maybe the needle valve is just closed. Oh, here we go. So I guess maybe I twisted the needle valve by accident or something, but yeah, seems to be working. Okay, so the high budget CO2 system is up and running again. It will probably take a while before we start seeing CO2 bubbles come out. Um, basically that's because the CO2 hose is filled with, oh, it's actually okay. See, there's always some water backflowing into the CO2 system, into the airline hose, and it has to get pushed out again through the diffuser, which takes a little bit of time, but I think I just need to upgrade to better check valves or something. If anyone has a good recommendation for a good check valve, let me know in the comments. Our low budget CO2 system is also still doing very good. We still have a lot of pressure in the bottle, and yeah, it's working just fine. So it's on 24-7. I do think we need to clean the diffuser a little bit. We'll soak it in some bleach because the CO2 bubbles are quite big for my liking. So after we soak it in some bleach, the, uh, the bubbles should be a lot finer again. So I'll show later how I do that. First things first, let's clean these windows. Let's remove the algae from the glass so we can see inside the actual aquarium. Ah, I see, here we go. CO2 is working again. Okay, so I just quickly cleaned the front glass with the LG scraper. So the low budget tank is looking sort of decent again. But the high budget tank, like, what is that? It's like the brown LG diatom monster has just emerged. So I can't look at this anymore. So let's just clean this whole tank properly. And then we can talk about the plant growth. Yes, I've managed to kill the brown algae monster that was living in our high budget tank. I'm currently soaking the diffuser as well as the inlet and the outlet from the filter in some bleach. I always like to keep the CO2 running when I'm doing this just to make sure that none of that bleach gets um, back into the diffuser basically. So after it's done soaking in the bleach, I'll soak it in, in some clean water just to, to rinse all that bleach off. 
Um, next up is to clean the low budget tank. It's actually looking quite good from here, right? I like how colorful it is already. So we're gonna clean, give this tank a bit of a clean as well. And then after that, we're gonna compare the individual plant growth between the two tanks. Okay, so both tanks are relatively clean again. So let's talk a little bit about the plant growth. So if we put them side by side, of course the high budget tank has grown more. The plants have grown a lot more there. Also the algae has grown a lot more there as well. Um, but the low budget tank is actually not that far behind and it has a lot less algae. So I'm happy to see that. Of course, the, the point of this experiment is not to see which tank is able to grow plants faster because then it will be obvious that the high budget tank would win because it has a lot more powerful light. So I think the point of this experiment is to see uh, what the big differences are over a period of time. So right now it's still very early, we're only two and a half, three weeks in. I think what I'm curious to see is how close we can get with the low budget tank to the results from the high budget tank. So of course with the high budget tank we have more powerful light. So we'll probably have uh, much more colorful plants, maybe a bit more compact growth as well. So I want to see how close the low budget tank can get to those results. Okay, so let's put both things side by side and compare the individual plant growth. So starting with the foreground, the carpet of Monte Carlo. I mean, in the high budget tank, we kind of, kind of already have a full carpet. It's quite, a, quite thick already. And in the low budget tank, it's not really a full carpet just yet. So there's quite a big difference there. Then the other foreground plant, the Marsalea hirsuta. I would say that both tanks are quite similar. I mean, they both have some decent plant growth, but there's not really a big difference there. So that's a good thing, both, both things are the same. Uh, moving on to the midground. What's very obvious in the midground is the Altenantara Reineke Mini. So in the low budget tank, they're quite big. But in the high budget tank, they actually haven't really grown much at all. So they're actually doing better in the low budget tank. So that's interesting. Um, what else we have in the midground? Well, on the left side, we have the Hygrophila pinatifida. Again, not that much of a difference between, yeah. I don't really see a big difference between the Hygrophila pinatifida and both tanks. So that's good. Um, then moving more towards the background, of course the stems. So I'm not sure what happened with the Rotala stems in the low budget tank, but I have a, uh, have a suspicion that they uh, kind of got damaged uh, during the time when I was rescaping the tank. So I took the previous experiment da down, I saved the stems, and that took a few days before I planted this experiment. So I think during that time they kind of maybe dried out a little bit, so kind of got damaged a little bit. So as you can see, the stems are not really growing, but from the stems, there's a lot of new stems growing. So it's very interesting, <laughs> but yeah, that's just how it is. The other stems, the Microntum umbrosum, yeah, big difference there. In the high budget tank, we have a lot more growth. And the last stem, the Ludwigia repens, again, a lot more growth in the high budget tank, but in the low budget tank, it's not far, not far off to be honest. So now that we've seen the differences in plant growth, I think it's time for the first trimming session. So the high budget tank definitely needs a trimming session. And the low budget tank maybe could be could go for a little bit longer, but yeah, there's some algae in between the plants as well. So yeah, I think it's best to just give both things a nice trimming session and let them grow back healthy and clean again. Alright, trimming session done. So now both tanks are sort of at the same level again. So curious to see what's going to happen right now. I'm still really voting for the, uh, for the low budget tank. I'm kind of a fan of the underdog. <laughs> yeah, let's see what's going to happen. That's the end of the video. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Don't forget to smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done this yet. 
Also, I just released a new membership. So if you want to become a member of the channel, check it out as well. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.